Now, as I said last time, the issue is that the theory of this part, of course, is not complicated. It's, it can be done in one lecture, but it needs a lot of practice. And so I don't want to do, probably I'll do some of the problems in a lecture as well, because not many people, I'm not sure how many people watch these tutorials, but then we also have to complete the squared course and we aren't left with many lectures. So probably I'll do some problems in a lecture, but I will continue doing these tutorials. And these are very important. People should not miss these. Now, uh, let's start with straight away. So what I'm gonna do is do some curve sketching problems. We have done some curve sketching in the beginning of the course, but we didn't have all the tools available. And now we follow kind of a routine. So there's a kind of a algorithm. And to follow this algorithm, you don't really need to know the shapes of the standard curves. All of those actually can be recovered by this algorithm. But it's nice to know those standard shapes so that you know that you're not doing something wrong. So what you do, you start by finding, find the horizontal asymptotes. That's the easy part. So what does this mean? This essentially just means that you are finding the value of the function at infinity, positive and negative infinity. You just want to see how does the function behave when X is very large? Is it going up? Is it going way up or going way down? Or is it approaching a constant value? So that's called the horizontal asymptotes. Then the next step you want to do is find any vertical asymptotes. So vertical asymptotes are essentially points where going from a number from the positive or negative, as you approach a number, if your function becomes plus infinity or minus infinity, that's the vertical asymptote. So you want to know if there is a, this is, there's another common name for it. Is there any singularity? So a point of discontinuity. So these things are to be done first before you do any derivative tests because derivatives cannot resolve these. If you don't find these any, find any other possible, but these are usually not required. Find any other possible discontinuities. and non-differentiability. So you just want to make sure if there is some jump or some kink, you know where it is. But when you're given a formula usually, uh, and which is not broken up into pieces, usually these things don't arise. And maybe I should have written the zeroth step which is find the domain first, because you may be dealing with a log or especially important if you have, I should say not if important, if you have 
have logs or square roots because you know that even without encountering a singularity they have a very they have a limited domain they are not defined for all real values it's not that you encounter something extraordinary at one point it's a whole range where they are not defined so you want to know which part of the real line your function is good is has has to be drawn on so once you have resolved these singularities now you want to come to this is now shape this is resolved in the rest of the algorithm which is find the points the critical points that is all those points where the first derivative is zero then the rest of the algorithm is optional optional depending on the root you want to take so you want to find the uh, regions where the function is increasing or decreasing then find the regions where the function is concave up or down so why do i write it as optional you can do it directly or can guess from local minima and local maxima so you have this this you find by putting the double derivative computing the double derivative at critical points if this is this then this is a minimum if it is this then it's a maximum and then you can just try to see if you are connecting them if you are connecting a minimum to a maximum obviously you will have to go to an increasing function and these regions in principle in principle this can also be found by also can be done via looking for looking where f derivative of x is positive or negative so where it's positive there is increasing and where it's negative is decreasing similarly these regions they can be found by computing this if this is greater than 0 then concave up and if this is less than 0 then concave <coughs> down but also can be guessed simply by putting this equal to 0 so if at a point you have double derivative equal to 0 then this is most likely an inflection point <coughs> where the function changes from uh, being concave up to concave down and if you have found those and you're connecting different of these so you know that which part is going to be concave up and which part is going to be concave down so these are different things which you should consider when you are <coughs> sketching the curve of a function now let's take some examples
And these examples are not very trivial, but the ones which I have chosen today, they are mostly concerned, they, they incorporate all of these, but mostly they, they actually, they're not focused on this part only. They have this part as well, but also they have some emphasis on this part too. <laughs> because it's very important. If you miss this, you will uh, you will miss the shape. You can miss the shape completely. <coughs> now, here you have so this you want to know the shape. So you start by find <coughs> horizontal asymptote. And you get this, you are simply doing this. Where does it go when you go to positive infinity? So this is, you can easily compute the limit. This goes to zero, this goes to zero. So the limit is one. <coughs> and when you go to negative infinity, this is again one. So these are the horizontal asymptote. Now we know that if I draw it, it's gonna take, it's gonna go to one here, and go to one here and do something in between. <coughs> now I can see that I expect a singularity at x is equal to zero. So it's gonna blow up over here. Now I want to make sure that I resolve this singularity properly so that I know that when I come close to zero, does it dip or does it blow up? And which way, if I come from the positive axis and when I come from the negative axis. So when you have a blowing singularity at a point, you should always check by coming from both sides. So first I compute the right limit approaching zero from here. I get this. Now, <clears throat> this guy is increasing, going to infinity. This guy is going to infinity. So this becomes irrelevant. So this is zero plus. If you want, you can keep that one, but won't be needed. I can take this common because what I'm having, when I approach it from the positive side, this goes to infinity. This part goes to infinity. And then I, this part also goes to infinity. So I'm having a infinity minus infinity form. So not sure what happens. So then we have to do something to be careful. We have to be careful and decide it carefully. So I get this. If I take one over X common, I get one minus one over X. Now what happens? This goes to infinity because zero, it, we are approaching zero from positive side. So we are getting bigger and bigger positive numbers. While this, goes to negative infinity and one I can ignore compared to infinity. So this is taking the form infinity times minus infinity, which is minus infinity. So that's what I know. And when I approach from the negative axis, from this side, from the left-hand side, 
Then what happens? Again, I can write it as one over X, one minus one over X. Now this guy goes to minus infinity because now I'm approaching, I'm making bigger and bigger number by using a very small negative number. So that gives me a negative infinity. While this guy inside also becomes negative infinity, but it has a minus in front of it. So this becomes positive infinity. So it goes to negative infinity again. That means over here, this guy is gonna dip from both sides, something like that. <clears throat> and now we want to see what happens in between. <coughs> so now find the critical points to guess the shape. So I have f derivative of x is minus one over x square minus minus two one over x cube. So it's minus one over x square plus two over x cube. <coughs> x cubed. And this I am going to put equal to zero. I should write it here. Put equal to zero to find critical points. And to solve this, now I know that the critical point is not going to be at x is equal to zero because there's a singularity at x is equal to zero. So I can, this is not, x is not equal to zero. Since x is not equal to zero, so I can multiply by x and I get by x cube, I get minus x plus two is zero. That means x is equal to two is a critical point. So there probably is a turn over there. Maybe, not. yes, maybe not. <coughs> I can decide that F derivative of X which is this thing For x less than zero, this is less than zero for x less than zero because this is a positive number and I'm multiplying it with a minus. I'm giving to the cube negative values that returns me a negative value. So this also returns me a negative number. So overall, the derivative is less than zero. So that means in this region it's gonna reach one and it's gonna decrease somehow dip to infinity in this region keeps going down doesn't turn over here which confirms our expectation because i found only one critical point at two so something probably happens at two <coughs> to see now I have to reach here at one, rising from here and something happens here. So probably something like this happens. And to check that I can compute, I should have written it in my algorithm. Let's write it here. For B, find f of value f of c at critical point. Find the value of function at the critical point if you can, if easy. 
Now, in this case, it's not hard. Critical point is x is equal to two. So f of two value of function at the critical point <coughs> is one plus one over two minus one over four. So it's one plus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.25. So it's about 1.25. So that means this is one and this is 1.25. So it's going to rise and then come down. <coughs> that means this better be a local maximum, which we can check. So it would be a check if we compute the second derivative. So let me first write the first derivative again for reference. And now the second derivative is minus, minus two over x cube plus two minus three over x four. So it's two over x cube minus six over x four. <coughs> and f double derivative of at two at the critical point is two over two cube minus two times three over Two four. <coughs> and this is a eight six this is negative because what is this? This is uh, one over two to the four point two five minus minus point three seven five, So less than zero. So I have a local maximum as I expected. So it's gonna be something like this, but I want to see nothing funny happens here. So I should find the regions of now finding the regions of concavity. <coughs> so I take this and I find that when does F double derivative of X is zero, where? So I get that two over x cubed, let's call it star, this implies <coughs> x, cube star over two star to the power four over six. I can divide by x cube because I know that it's not at zero. So I get six over two is the solution, only solution x star is equal to three. So that means I can now very carefully draw what's happening. This is the final sketch. <clears throat> the 
if I call this one, then at infinity is reaching one and it's dipping down here. And throughout this, nothing funny happens. It's always concave down because I do not see an inflection point. F double derivative never becomes zero in this region. Then it also reaches one here, but at x is equal to two, let's call this x is equal to two, it rises a bit more than one and it's concave down here too. But when it reaches three, there's an inflection here. because it has to turn. So here, until here, it's concave down. But from here on, it's like up, right? It's going in this direction. And we know exactly where it happens. It happens at x is equal to three. So we have a very accurate picture of this function. <coughs> Any question about this? Now let's take, so this one was actually problem 45 from book exercises, which ones are these? 4.3. So you should do as many exercises as you can. And my very strong suggestion is never, ever, ever download a solution manual for these things. Unfortunately, they are so easily available now over the internet, but never try doing it because it's never gonna help. It only makes you lazy and stops you from thinking. So about the marks, they still they they will be uploaded hopefully tomorrow because there's still a problem with the portal and that they have told me that it will be resolved tomorrow. So then hopefully they will be uploaded tomorrow. For the syllabus is same like last time. I'll, I'll send an email with the exact syllabus, but it's from what was included in the second hourly starting from there and then until we do whatever we do until the last lecture they will be up they will not be uploaded on lms they will be uploaded on oracle what you call oracle is also called the portal there is some problem which is going on in the portal that's why your quizzes all they all of them are checked but they haven't been uploaded they have told me that it will be resolved to, by tomorrow so I'm very much hoping by tomorrow or at maximum by Tuesday, all of the marks will be available. So let's look at this problem 46. Now I'm gonna run again the <clears throat> all the algorithm, but I'm not gonna be I'm gonna be a bit fast this time, not specify everything in great detail. But as always, start by finding the asymptotes, the ho horizontal ones. So the horizontal asymptote is very easy because you can neglect this and this when X is very large. So it's so it's one. Similarly, it doesn't matter 
if you put negative infinity, is still x squared over x squared, so it's one. So again, the horizontal asymptotes are one and one. <coughs> there are no vertical asymptotes. Because this is a rational function, it has no discontinuity, no zero here. It's never zero at any point, so no vertical asymptotes. And now we can find the critical points. So F derivative of X is two X does the chain rule. So when I simplify it, So I can take two X common and then X squares will cancel. And I'll be left with four plus four, 16 X. So this is zero implies X is equal to zero. That's only possible by this. This is only critical point. And you can tell from this for X less than zero, F derivative of X is less than zero, so decreasing. And for X greater than zero, because it's all decided by this X, this is always positive. So that means this critical point must be a local minimum because that's literally the definition of the local minimum. <coughs> so it occurs at x is equal to zero and the function comes from one and I can find what's the value of the function at the local minimum. F of zero is zero minus four over zero plus four, so it's minus one. And it's symmetric, so same shape on the both sides. This is one minus one. <coughs> so it's gonna be something like that. And I can see if it's gonna have this shape, it's gonna have this region of up, concave up, and these regions of concave down, down. And I can find where does that happen by computing the second derivative of it. <coughs> but, you can do that. Let me just skip that and move on to the next one. <coughs> now let's look at slightly different kind. They're all interesting in a sequence.
Uh, well, I'll do this in the end. Let me do this one first. <coughs> So this guy, when I find the asymptotes, so for large X, they both are blowing up. So I can ignore this. I have this form. So they cancel, so it gives me a minus one. And on the other side, this goes to zero, this goes to zero as well. So it's zero. That's the asymptote. So that means over here is somehow gonna go to zero. I don't know from here or here. And from this side, it's gonna go to minus one. <coughs> and now I find the vertical asymptotes. They exist because E of X can be equal to two, one. Actually, it happens at X is equal to zero. So there's a singularity here, here. But I want to know what happens when I approach from the right-hand side and from the left-hand side. So X zero plus when I'm approaching from here, what happens over there? I have to the X one minus E to the zero plus one minus E to the zero plus E when X is slightly more than zero, X is more than zero, E to the X is more than one. So this number, is less than zero because this is bigger than one. So I'm subtracting something which is more than one from this. So I'm approaching, I'm making this number smaller and smaller, but from the negative sides. And this is still approaching one. So I have this form, one over minus zero, which is minus infinity. And when I approach from the negative side, over here, it doesn't matter because it's just gonna approach one. Here, you have to be careful that when you're subtracting from one, are you getting a positive number or negative? So now here, when X is less than zero, E to the X is less than one. So you are having a number bigger than zero. So you have this form, one over zero plus, which is going to infinity. So this function is gonna go, uh, what were the asymptotes? Minus one and zero. So from here, it goes from here, something like that. And here, it doesn't go like that. It goes like this. It doesn't touch the x-axis. Goes like this. And I want to know if something funny happens here. So I have just drawn it like this, but there could be some waves around here, some turns around here. So now find the critical points. <laughs> so 
So for that, you need the derivative. And derivative is ex over 1 minus ex plus ex minus 1. So this becomes one minus e x whole square. This gets multiplied with this e x minus e to the two x minus and minus plus e to the two x. So this is simply e x over one minus e x whole square. And if I put it equal to zero, <coughs> e to the x is never zero. So no critical points. And this is a square positive. This is e to the x is always positive. So the function is always increasing which this graph shows, starts from here, always increasing, starts from here, always increasing, and no critical points, doesn't turn ever. <coughs> <coughs> and you can also find F double derivative of X, you will find it's greater than zero here and less than zero here. So it's always concave up here and concave down here. So we have completely figured out the graph of this. So any question? Let me do this. And this is problem. Okay, which one is it? Okay, I lost that. Forty nine. Now, first of all, this is an even number, even function. So I know that this shape would be symmetric, whatever it is. <coughs> and this is zero. e to the minus infinity zero on both sides is going to zero at it, as it must for the symmetric and no vertical asymptotes perfectly well defined everywhere on the real line never blows up i don't see any singularities here so critical points e to the minus x square d by dx of minus x square if i put it equal to zero only critical point at x is equal to zero And from here, I can see, because this is always positive. So 
for x less than zero, f derivative of x is <clears throat> greater than zero because I, I have an extra minus. And for x greater than zero, f derivative of x is less than zero. So increasing and decreasing. So that means this is a local maxima, which we can confirm. Double derivative of this guy, <coughs> we have minus two e minus x square, minus two x, I already have the derivative of this. So x square e minus x square. So if I put the critical point here, I get minus two. So it implies a maxima because it's less than zero. Now that means the shape is something like this. goes to zero here, zero here, and which is, I can also compute what's the maximum value. So that's just one. Something like this. I can, since I have computed this, I can also find where it's concave up and where it's concave down, what's the point of inflection. <coughs> when this is zero. So that would be, if I get this common, implies x square is half and x is So somewhere over here at x is equal to minus one over under root two and x is equal to plus one over under root two, here is concave down. Down. While here it's up. So it has to turn, it has to change its shape. And that happens, we know where it exactly happens here. <coughs> now I can do one or two more interesting ones. Uh, e minus x square. Let me do one very interesting one where the domain comes into play. Just give me a minute. I have to get some water. So let's consider this. 51. Now over here, since it's a log, it's a good idea to first decide what is the domain. So if you remember in the algorithm, I said, if it's a log or a square root, better to first decide what is the domain. <clears throat> now, if you recall, so it's a function of a function, f naught g, where f is log, and g is one minus log. So you first decide the domain of this because first the input goes to this guy 
and whatever output comes goes to this guy. <coughs> so we have to make sure that this is well defined. So first of all, we need we need x greater than zero because that's required by the log inside. But that's not it. Whatever comes out of here, we also need that the second log also doesn't take, doesn't like any negative numbers or zero. So we also need one minus log X to be greater than zero. We can't have anything for the output to be less than zero. So this means that log of X has to be greater than, I just take it to the other side, has to be less than one. And when is that two? So log of X is one at X is equal to E and log is an increasing function. So this would be true if X is less than E. because log of E is one and anything less than E has a log less than one and anything more than E has a log more than one. So that means the domain is these points are not included. It's not defined on these. <coughs> it's an open interval from zero to E. And now we can see, try to see what's the value which the function takes at these endpoints. End but since the endpoints are not included, so we should be taking limits. So behavior, just like in the ordinary cases, we look for the horizontal asymptote by seeing what happens at the endpoints. And in that case, the endpoints were infinity. In this case, the endpoints are zero and E. at the endpoints of the domain. And since endpoints are not included, not included, so compute the limits. So limit x going to zero, f of x, <coughs> what is this? So you have as x goes to zero, this log one minus, this goes to, when x goes to zero, log of x goes to one, and I'm going from the positive side because I'm coming from here. One plus from positive side. So, uh, log of zero. not one, sorry. You are approaching infinity as you approach X from the positive side. This is the graph of the log. As you approach zero, you go to minus infinity. So it's log of one minus minus infinity, which is log of one plus infinity. And since infinity is much larger than one, so it behaves like log of infinity. And we know that at infinity, 
log becomes infinite. <coughs> so as x goes to zero plus, f of x goes to infinity. So we know what's the behavior of this function over here. And as x goes to e, this function, which is log of one minus log of e, so it's log of one minus one, log of zero. And remember, because you're approaching it from e minus, this is this number is slightly less than one. So you're approaching log from the positive side. <coughs> so it's minus infinity. That means this function, this domain is from zero to e, and it's gonna do something like this. As it approaches this, this goes way up, and as it approaches this, this goes dips down. Now we want to know what happens in between. So the derivative critical points If I put it equal to zero, no solution. So no critical points. So now what I want to do is find the concavity and points of inflection. So for that, I compute the second derivative. <clears throat> and that gives me, first I take the derivative of this guy and that, then the other guy. Then this remains as it is, derivative of the other guy. And to find the point of inflection, I'm gonna put this equal to zero. So I see an x square here, x square here, and I'm not, never at x is equal to zero, that's not in the domain, so I can multiply with x square. This gives me a plus, minus, 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 three minuses. <coughs> and this is, by the way, this is an x, not a two. So I get one over one minus log X, this condition. Whole square. So that means, and since log of X, So I get one is equal to, I just invert it and cancel. Log of X is zero. That means X is equal to one. Log X is not equal to one. I have no problem in encountering a zero here. I can multiply by one minus log X because this is never zero. Because remember it will become zero at the other end of the domain, which is not included at X is equal to E. So this is the inflection point. X is equal to one is the only inflection point. That's important part and no critical point. 
So that means if we plot it, this is zero, this is E, and somewhere here is one. So the plot looks like And at the inflection point, the value of the function is log of one minus log of one. So it's log of one, which is zero. So it's concave up and then it becomes concave down. Always decreasing, it's just that it's pointing up here and pointing down here and then dips. This is the shape. Let me do one last problem. Maybe something slightly different. Let me try. That's the 67. I don't know how hard it is. They put it in purple, that means slightly hard. Some of the ones which I have done were in purple. So maybe we can do this too. This is given to you. And they're fine. They're saying find a cubic function. This is the most general cubic. That is some values for constants A, B, C, and D such that it has a uh, local maximum value of three at x is equal to minus two and a local minimum value of zero at x is equal to one. So it has both a maximum, local maximum, and a local minimum. And they occur respectively at minus two and one. And their values, the maximum value is three and the minimum value is zero. So what you need for the local maximum or minimum, you have to put F derivative, compute this. And this is equal to zero. <coughs> and so that means the solutions are x is equal to minus 2b minus 12 a c is the just the four a c term times six a So I can take the four out and cancel a two. So this is has to be put equal to zero. So you, that means we have a condition that we have many conditions. First of all, two critical points must exist.
this implies b square minus 3ac is greater than zero. Only then you will have two critical points. And minus b plus minus b square minus 3ac, well, this is not equal to zero. This is equal to, uh, you have two solutions. This is equal to minus two or one. So this guy has two solutions, minus two and one. So that means I can factorize it. X plus two and X minus one. This must be equal to this guy. Because this side has two solutions. X is equal to minus two and X is equal to one. So if I open it up, I get X square uh, plus two X, X square plus two X minus X minus two. So X square plus X minus two <coughs> that implies A has to be one by three, B has to be one by two, and C has to be minus two. So my function takes the form one by three X cubed plus one by two X square minus two X plus D and at X is equal to minus two F of minus two it is one over three. This has to be equal to, I was given, it is three. Uh, minus eight by three plus two plus four plus D is equal to three. <coughs> plus two plus four plus D. So six minus eight by three, so it's three, 18 minus eight plus D is equal to three, 10 by three, minus one by three. So we have found the value of D as well. So the cubic is one by three. And if I check it and the other value X is equal to uh, 
Okay, so this is done. Any question? Let me stop here.